What's up friends, Chook here and welcome back to Bit Heroes. It is Thursday, it is capture day, and we are going to do something a little bit different today uh, than we have in the last couple of months, I would say. Uh, I mean, it's still capture day, but we've been focusing on Oxler uh, and getting Oxler Roth, which we now have, which is great. And we've also been focusing on uh, trying to stable plus five at Walkham, which is also great. That is more important now, which is going to segue into... Uh, the main reason and the main part of this video and what we're going to do since the updates come out augments are now a huge part of uh of familiars and as a result so is stabling stabling is now more important than it ever has been before and uh you want to stable your fams as much as you can obviously this is uh is better for legendaries and mythics and stuff good luck stabling mythics by the way um but yeah stabling legendaries and stuff is going to get you a lot more bang for your buck now so we're good in the fact that we have a basically a plus four welcome and we only need three fams to get to plus five then he's capped out which is great um but then we're thinking about tanks right so i would really wanted oxlaroth as my main tank and i spent a year and a half trying to get oxler and now it's not really that great because i'm not going to be able to stable him right i mean i would need five oxler five more oxler and stuff and no so thinking about what uh what tank to use and this is good for every free to play player out there including pay to win or pay to play players as well uh you want to be able to get a familiar a tank and a healer that are easily obtainable that aren't a pain in the ass right so if we look at a familiar list and we look at our fusion list we can see that like these guys good luck stabling them right um gummy you're gonna need 15 uh sorry not 15 25 more gems uh that's not too bad that's not too bad, honestly, because they're uh, dungeon bosses, which are a lot easier to get than raid, uh, dungeon epics, sorry, um, which are a lot easier to get than raid epics. So, you know, that could be one. It's not too bad. Uh, Fatty, same thing. The only problem with these guys is they don't have this inbuilt, um, this augment here. So, because they have this, right? They have this bonus, so they don't have this augment here. Um, so that's something to keep in mind of. But the main thing is, the main thing I want to talk about is Walkham is a good choice, Wembo is a good choice as healers, and uh, as far as I'm concerned, um, Bobadom, the old faithful Bobadom, here he is, is the best free-to-play um, tank right now, I would say. All you need is a Blagna, a Yobbo, and an Osdomdom. That's all you need. It's easy, right? Um, all of these are fairly, again, easy to obtain compared to other things. They're not easy to obtain and they take ages and whatnot, but compared to other tanks and things, this is pretty easy to obtain. It's only one raid um, epic, which is uh, to go into Blagnar. It's R Ragnar, I think his name is. We'll go have a look. So it's only one raid epic, which is fine. Uh, if you're making Walkham, you need a Duo Bombs and you need a Driffin. So that's a pain in the ass. Um, so this is only just the one. And if we can find him, wherever he is, here he is. You need a Blubber, which is a raid epic. Uh, a dungeon epic, sorry, and you need Ragnar, which is the raid epic. So only the one raid epic, and you need a, a, a dungeon raid, uh, a dungeon epic, which is, a, you know, the dungeon boss Blubber. If we go back to the Bobadom schematic again, you also need Yobbo and, and uh, Robot Sprockets. So if you're low on Sprockets, it's going to suck, but I've got like 4 billion of them. So you're, you're going to need uh, another dungeon epic, another dungeon boss, and then Nos Dom Dom. Uh, is Nos Dudu, which is another dungeon epic boss, and I can't remember what the other thing is, but it's it's a common, I'm pretty sure. So you pretty much need three dungeon bosses and one du dungeon epics and one raid epic to make a Bobadom. It's not that bad. So considering Bobadom has a fair chunk of all the stats, like 1200 attack, 1600 um, stamina, and 1000 speed, and he has 30% evade chance, with augments, plus five in this dude would be pretty pretty good as a free to play player as, as a as a you know like i said if you're putting money in and you're doing other things that's fine but as free to play i always recommend bobadom and wembo as your first two legendary familiars anyway because then you've got a tank and a healer um and wembo you have to get squib and you also have to get driffin so he's two um raid epics same with with walkham so they're going to be a bit harder to plus five but bobadom should be relatively the easiest of that type of thing so after four nearly five minutes talking about it let's start doing it right so but i wanted to go over that and if any free-to-play players are out there and they're wondering what's going on and with the augment system and what to do and all the rest of it stabling is is super important now if you want to get the most bang for your buck and if you're looking for a tank bobadom is the way to go so 
the only raid familiar we need is Ragnar, which is raid one. Which is surprising that I only have, oh actually, while we're here, I may as well show that I have one Blagnar, which is the fusion this guy made already. So that's one, one Ragnar down. And then I also have just a spare Ragnar somewhere. Uh, where is he? Where is he? He should be in here somewhere. Ragnar? Anyway, I have a spare one of him, wherever he is. So effectively we have two of him. We only need three more. Um, which is really good. Funnily enough, considering how many times I did raid one, there he is. Uh, I did raid, raid one for Oxler. Um, and was using capture eight and all that stuff and didn't just load up on these dudes is kind of funny uh, I'm not sure why I, I keep I, I've got squibbos or squibs Sorry, I got a, a butt ton of them and I think I have a butt ton of shades as well But for whatever reason I just didn't get the Ragnar drops or um, procs I should say or they just didn't want to you know be persuaded or whatnot uh, But I find that kind of funny that I did so many raid one runs for Oxler and uh, you know I don't have the the appropriate amount of Ragnars. I thought I would have when I when I thought about it, and I'm like, oh yeah, I'll do Bobadon. Um, actually, I want to double check that I don't have it. Um, the decline duplicates on. Um, yeah, when I thought about it, I'm like, oh, I need Ragnar. Oh, I've probably got heaps of him. That's going to be good. Only the two, so that was slightly disappointing. Uh, we do not have Epic on. That's good. Um, I mean, if we get an Oxler, just randomly. It'll be pretty funny considering it took us a year and a half to get it. Uh, I've got a spare Astaroth, so I could stable um, Oxlaroth once. I mean, it's better than none, right? But trying to get a plus five Oxlaroth is just, you, you may as well just, you know, <laughs> just give up. Just quit the game. It's not going to happen unless you spend a lot of money um, or spend a hell of a lot of time or both, probably both. Uh, but it's not really feasible, right? Unless you're a whale. So yeah, Bobadom and Wembo slash Walkum, definitely the two fams, um, healer and uh, damage, sorry, tank and healer stables to go for, 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 you know, the easiest ones. If you are a tank and you're looking for a DPS option, uh, um, I would probably just use uh, two Wembos uh, or Walkums, whichever one you go for, because Say you, like, Korgs is an option, right? Because Korgs has got, like, the dual strike and hits like a truck and all the rest of it. But the problem with that is, say you're a tank. Um, and you're, you know, you want a, say you get a plus five Walkum. And then you're like, okay, I want a plus five Korgs. You're going to have to start Korgs from zero and work all the way up and get all the fams you need for him, da 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 Whereas if you want two plus five Wembos, uh, Walkums, you already have one plus five Walkum. All you need to do is make one, one more Walkum and you've got two plus five Walkums. So... It's probably better to just work on two of the same healer slash DPS, whether it be Walkum, whether it be Wembo, whether it be whatever whatever you're gonna do. Um, it's probably better to just go two of two of the same thing. Again, that's kind of a benefit um, that that tanks have that they can just focus on the same familiar. Tanks have it pretty easy, man. Uh, even with these changes and stuff, tanks still have it easy. Uh, you know, like exactly what I just mentioned. The familiar side of things is is pretty good. You just build. You know, you just stable and build the crap out of one familiar. So, like, we're we're working on plus five walkum, right? And we're pretty close. If we were to get that, we would have one plus five walkum. If we made another one, we would have two plus five walkums. Uh, and if we were a tank, then we've got ourselves and two plus five healers slash DPSs, pretty damn strong. Um, but as a DPS, you are forced to go a healer and a tank. Um, so it's a bit disappointing, but it is what it is. I mean, and even if you're a tank, having a plus five tank, uh, like a plus five walker, uh, what's his name? Bobadon? It's still going to be good because you can use it in uh, PvP, you can use it in um, invasion and all that sort of stuff. So you're still going to get use out of it, just not as much as a DPS player. Um, but, you know, it's still useful. And a plus five uh, anything is going to be, any legendary at least, is going to do well for you, regardless of what it is. But us personally, uh, we are going to go for Bobadom and Walkum. So I just cannot get that duo bombs to drop because uh, then our Walkum is five, uh, plus four, sorry. And then all we need is one more duo bombs and one more uh, Drifin. So we're super close. Uh, and maybe I should start, I, I should focus on that first uh, and get him to plus five so it's done and then start working on Bobadom. 
um, but I don't know. I just thought for this video, at least, we'll just do something a bit different and we'll go for Ragnar for Bobadom. We can also go into the dungeons as well and do the Blubber dungeon and the Nosdudu dungeon and the, uh, what was the other one? I can't think off the top of my head. Dungeon. Uh, we can also do them for, the, oh, uh, Yeti, that's right, to get those guys because we're going to need them as well. And they're a lot easier to catch. Uh, they, they're the dungeon epic boss things have a higher um, persuasion proc chance than raid epics do. So they're the easy ones, uh, but I thought maybe just knocking out the five uh, Ragnars first would be handy. We've got two, we need three more. But we'll see. I think I think maybe we'll just do Bobadon for this week and then next week and until we do it, we'll get plus five Walkham and then we can just put him to bed, he's done. We don't need to worry about him yet. We can just smash him full of augments, make him as strong as we possibly can. That will also help me in Trials Gauntlet. Uh, so Trials Gauntlet, I haven't been able to do 500 yet, which is the tier 10 starting point, not the tier 10 stat, just like the bog standard absolute lowest tier 10 um, starting point. I haven't been able to do it with Oxla, Roth, and Walkham, and just like, I just getting destroyed. But I swapped Oxla, Roth out for meaty, and I thought I'll just put him like a meat shield in there like just pure stamina and pure like mitigation and stuff and see how that goes and i can actually do it so um i thought oxlaroth would be better because he's got a bit of damage and self-healing and all that sort of thing but turns out just a meat shield is is better for trials gauntlet at least at the moment um once we get some you know bobadom stable and stuff i'll replace him and that should be pretty good 30 percent uh evasion with all those stats as well and the augments should do us pretty well but for the moment, Meaty is getting me done. Uh, 500 is being able to, to be done. So I can just showcase here. Uh, 500, highest done is 500. And uh, that's my team. So it works for now. Uh, if we want to get to Trials Gauntlet uh, set drops, it's like 680. We're at 500 and it's barely doable. So we're not going to get that for a while, like a long while, uh, which is a shame. A very, very big shame because the let's just do a yeti while we're talking um it's a big shame because the raid set is a tank set i'm not a tank i'm a dps the dps set is trials gauntlet raid sets are always always much easier to get than trial gauntlet sets because you can get carried by your high level friends right so if you're you know in raid five or something not that you want to focus on sets in raid five or, or six or anything until you want to focus on sets on um you know the highest tier and whatnot but if you've got high level friends and you're just smashing out heroics and what whatever you've got a good chance of getting those uh those sets because every heroic dungeon you complete every bot heroic uh done uh heroic raid boss you kill there's a chance of a set dropping so you can kind of get carried by your friends and clear heroics a lot easier because you've got four high, high level or, or, you know, tanky friends or whatever to help you out with. Whereas Trials Gauntlet, you have to rely, rely on yourself and your familiars. So if you have crappy familiars or they're not stabled or whatever, you don't have legendaries, all that sort of stuff, you're going you're gonna to struggle to do Trials Gauntlet at a higher tier. So for me to get to 680, I'm gonna, first of all, I'm going to need a crap ton of TS and I'm going to need to upgrade uh, pretty much all my gear from tier 9 to tier 10. That's that's the first problem. The second problem is having uh, awesome familiars. I have a pretty good range of familiars. Uh, you know, I've got the meat tank meaty. I've got a Bobadom, which we're going to start stabling. I've got a Oxlaroth. Uh, as far as tanks goes, I've got a Gummy. I've got a Fatty. I've got like a few tanks um, I, that I can use, that I'm able to use. Let's clear this so we can do it by ourselves for those uh, bounties. Um, but yeah really it's gonna fall down to yourself and your familiars so if you're not you know, if you're not that strong or your familiars are not that strong you're not going to be able to do the set um tier of trials gauntlet whereas heroic uh, raids you can kind of get babysit a bit and as long as your friends are high enough or, or good enough or ts enough or whatever it is uh you can get sets that way so yeah raid sets are always easier and unfortunately it's the tank set and from what people are talking, like in, you know, hearing from the grapevine, all that sort of stuff, apparently it's not that great uh, as a tank set. So a lot of people are upscaling their um, set from the last 
Tears Trials Gauntlet, that tank set, Polaris, I think it's called. Uh, and the Oblit set, Obliteration set from the previous tier and all the rest of it. So they don't really like, tanks don't really like this new set as much. I could be wrong, but that's the kind of vibe I'm getting at the moment. Um, so yeah, we, I don't think we'll be getting the DPS set anytime soon. And as far as T10 loot goes, so it'll be a, a week, a week since the new T launched, uh, is it a T week or two weeks? Feels like two weeks. I think it's only one week, uh, since the new stuff launched on Saturday and I've got two drops. I've got one legendary, just one, one legendary this whole time running, running everything. And, you know, I've been able to clear heroic probably 75% of the time. Uh, sometimes I do hard. Depends because my the the my raid team often swaps their their builds around. So sometimes I've got a really good bait tank, then they go DPS. I can't do heroic, so I do hard, etc., etc. So I've got to make sure my my raid team is the way I need it to be before I can try heroic. But when I do heroic, I can I can clear it about 75% of the time. Uh, but in all that stuff and the hards and world bosses and everything, I've only got one one legendary, which sucks. That's like. That's really, really bad drop rate RNG stuff. But I did, however, get a Mythic, which is hilarious. So the first drop I got from tier 10 was this Mythic, Frosty Bite, which uh, gives you 5% SP skill damage. So that's pretty good. Uh, that will be the first thing I will upgrade. Uh, this is the other legendary I got, which is a ring. The raid set, the, the tank set thing, because I might like I might just work towards it and have it anyway and use it as a DPS. I mean you know, I'm not going to be able to get the DPS set. So if I get the, that tanky set, maybe I'll just be a little bit tankier or something. I'm not sure. Either way, that has a, uh, a neck as part of the set. So I would, uh, if I did that, I would only be able to get three parts of the set. So I don't know, maybe I'll just go all legendaries to start with, just max out my TS with legendaries, which will be a lot cheaper than doing mythics and, um, well, I'll do that mythic, but, uh, but just normal upgrading, normal legendaries is a lot cheaper than upgrading mythics and sets so maybe i'll just do that mythic um and then unless i get another one uh, the other mythic from from the raid i can't remember what, what slot it is or what it does or anything i'm pretty sure there's two uh but then every other slot i'll just max out uh legendaries All right and that way i'll my ts will boost a heap which will make doing uh heroic raid even easier uh and then maybe full legendaries full ts will be able to do uh the the 680 or whatever it is trials gauntlet and then i can work towards that uh dps set and that won't be too bad because say i get the dps set or two parts of it or whatever it be if i break down those legendaries i'm gonna get i think it'll be um 400 or something what am i doing gems for it'll be 400 i think it is 500 um you know upgrade materials whatever they're called in this in this thing like the, the the rom bits and the the beanstalks and all that whatever they're called in this tier in tier 10 at least i think you need i think it's 400 for a legendary 500 for a set and 600 for a mythic i think so say um it's 500 for a set if i break down a legendary i'll get roughly 250 back so if i have a full thing of legendary i'm, I'm completely decked out in legendaries i have max ts and everything and then i start going for the set when i get the set uh, if I break down my legendaries, I'm going to get a bunch of that material back. So it's not like I'm going to have to farm all, all of those materials all over again. So it kind of like, I'm already halfway there, if that makes sense. So it probably won't be that bad of a, bad of a call to do that. So that's probably what I'll do. Even if I get the tank set, unless I get the three parts I'm after, then I might upgrade it and, and wear it. But other than that, I'll probably just deck out legendaries. Um, but I will upgrade that mythic first because if I'm just going to do legendaries in every slot, I may as well get the mythic, um, and it's going to be stronger than legendaries with that, with that skill on it. So I'll upgrade that one first, but to do that, <laughs> I need more, I need just any legendaries from tier 10, um, to break down into those materials, whatever they're called. In fact, I want to know what those materials are called because it's bugging me. And I can also see how many robot sprockets I have. So if we go to materials um what are they called they are called crubble there you go so i need a crap ton of crubble i've got in in nearly a week i guess because today's thursday it started on on saturday in a week i've got 30 crubble so considering you need 400 to upgrade a legendary 
that's not, you know, it's not going to cut it. I'm going to need a crap ton of legendaries to break down. Uh, okay, how many sprockets do I have? I have 102. So I know that a lot of the new players and people that are watching my beginner guides and, and all that sort of stuff and working towards Yobo and and um, and Bob and Om and all that, they're like, dude, I don't have any robot sprockets. Where do I get robot sprockets? How can I get them? Da -da 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 -da. And I say, what everyone says, uh, they're just a random drop. You can't really farm them. There's no way you can go particularly to farm them. Uh, they just drop from time to time. Um, so, you know, it's just one of those things. However, in expedition uh you can get them at least from one of the expeditions you can get them as a reward at the end of the expedition so if you clear a certain amount of points in expedition you will get robot sprockets um what is it robot sprockets and, and bacon and something else and whatever from those from those specific uh like there's the robot dungeon and then there's the fatty dungeon and all that so each of those have their own upgrade material so the robot dungeon needs sprockets the fatty dungeon needs bacon etc so those expedition whatever whatever that expedition is called i can't remember what it's called once you complete that at the end of the when the expedition finishes depending on what rank you got or what uh how many points you got in expedition you will get some free sprockets from there as well uh but in general they just drop from i believe anything apart from pvp i don't think they drop from pvp uh from pvp but i think trials gauntlet raids dungeons um all that stuff they can they can drop so potentially this enemy we're about to fight here this penguin and his and his friends they could drop a robot sprocket they won't <laughs> but they could so yeah we've got i think we needed uh, i think it's three right for a yeti uh for a yobbo sorry so we need 15 we have 105 so as far as that goes um we've got more than enough right way more than enough so we needed blubber and we also needed nos doodoo -doo. so let's do a nos doodoo -doo just for the sake of it just to swap it up a bit yes we want to use just ourselves it's been a while since i've been here holy crap like a long time like a year plus probably maybe more very long time uh, but yeah, we're going to need five blubbers, five nos doodoos, and five yetis, which will take some time. Um, you know, it took, I don't want you. Oh, wait. I was wondering why that was coming up and it's like, we're not getting duplicates, but we don't actually have that guy. So he popped up. That's funny. Um, yeah, considering it took like months to get five yetis to make, uh, fatty. Remember if you, if you've been around the channel for, for a while, remember we did like months of farming for fatty to get, um, sorry, Yeti to, to fuse fatty. And finally we did it. It took, it took a while, man, to get those five Yetis. Um, so to get five, any, any dungeon boss, is going to take a while. They do come up for persuasion, like here and there, and more so than, uh, raid, um, epics, which I've talked, which I've just talked about before. Uh, but they're still, you know, it's still an epic. They don't just pop up all the time, like commons and rares do. So to get five of each, so 15 effectively raid, uh, sorry, dungeon epics, it's going to take a while. And to get three raid epics is also going to take a while. Um, but, you know, it's something to aim for, right? So as I mentioned, next week we will go back and finish off Walkham or attempt to finish off Walkham and, and do that. Once he's fully decked out, uh, he's going to help me push Trials and Gauntlet even more. Um, not that I'll get up to 60, 680, but I'll probably be go, able to go up a few, a few more um, tiers a few more numbers whatever you want to call it a few more difficulty levels uh if he's maxed out also it'll help me with pvp and all the rest of it um so we'll, we'll max out him and then we don't need to worry about him anymore like he's done tick him off uh never have to go and do raid two or raid four ever again hopefully and then we'll smash out bobadon and just do raid ones until our eyes bleed and then once they've stopped bleeding we'll do yeti's dungeon until they bleed again and then once they've stopped bleeding, we go do Blubber, and then same thing, and Nos Doo Doo. And by the time we do that, I'll be about 86 years old, and um, this game will probably no longer be a thing. But we'll strive for it, and we'll see how far we get. Uh, even, you know, even like a plus three or something is going to be good, because it's it multiplies uh, those augment bonuses. So the more things you have stabled, the better. So, yeah, before stabling 
wasn't really that important. Like, a lot of people did it, including me, like, Walkums and stuff, but it wasn't really that important. And especially early game, like, you know, stabling your shramps and your ballins and stuff. Like, I know a lot of uh, early players uh, did that. I don't think it's necessary at all. Uh, because by the time you get, they get you to raid one, and by the time you get to raid one, you kind of just replace them with Squibo and Yobbo anyway. I mean, you can get Yobbo as soon as you get to zone two, if you have enough robot sprockets. Um, so I don't think stabling shrimps and ballin, even though they're, they're like really, really good early on, is, is the thing. Because the, all the time you're spending trying to catch, um, those four familiars, the Bob and Merlin and whatever the other two are, shrimps and the Shrump, all the time you spend catching all those four, you could be doing other shit. You could be doing the, the highest uh, dungeon you can do on um, Heroic and getting better gear or whatever it is. So, yeah, stabling earlier fams like that, not so important. Now, I guess you could. And you could stable like Shramps 5 and Ball and 5 and put, give them augments. And they will probably be as strong as Yobo and Squibbo. But you're better just getting Yobo and Squibbo and then, and then augmenting them. I don't know, but the augments have thrown the spanner in the works as far as stabling goes. Um, stabling's always been a kind of end gamey thing, like get the familiar you want and then start stabling it, not just get a familiar, any familiar and stable the crap out of it. So, you know, there's no point stabling something if you're going to replace it, get to the thing where you want it and you're happy with it, but whatever familiar that is, and then start stabling it. So that's, that's my advice for that. But everyone's free to do whatever the hell they want. So if you want to stable a, uh, a snake, you would just want to get five of these dudes and stable them, uh, go for it. It's not going to help you, but you can do it. But don't. Don't do it. Anyway, I think we'll probably do this dungeon and then call it a day. Uh, no persuasion. Not even an offer of persuasion. Oh, no. No, no, no. We got that, that, uh, that pink, I don't know what he is, lobster guy. Is he in here? This dude. He came up with persuasion and we caught him. So, you know. Success? We caught a we caught a common. Woo! Uh, that was good. Actually, let's do. Considering we've done a few nos doodos and we've done a few yetis, let's do one blubber, and that way we've done uh, every familiar that goes into fusing. Um, nos doodoo. Uh, <laughs> not nos doodoo. Bobadon. My God, I get so mixed up and turned around with these familiar names. Like they can't just call them something easy. Right, I know that they, I know that they they do the old chestnut of taking parts of each familiar's name and, and merging them all together. So like Gramps and Shrump turns into Shramps, and Bob and Merlin turns into Ballin. Um, but it gets out of hand, man. When it gets to like legendaries and familiars and stuff, it just I don't know. The names in this game are, are, are just blow my mind sometimes, and I never remember half of them. Uh, and then the ones I do remember, I have no idea how to pronounce. Not that that's different for me. Uh, if you've watched any of my Let's Plays or anything, I always give pretty much any character a different name that I will be able to remember that's similar to their name. Um, because I, I, I can never remember or know how to pronounce, uh, the name that they actually are. So, you know, in this, it's kind of the same. So like that, the, the mythic, um, fam, like, water I don't know what the shitty's name is. Uh, oh, we can't view it because we're we're in here. But the mythic one that has um, Zolfby and and whatever else in it's like W A L G D R or something. It's Waldrigger. That's his name. Um, so you know, I I just probably call him like Wally or something. And then that's <laughs> if I were, if it was a let's play type thing. And then I would be able to remember who he is. Uh, let's find out what he's actually called. Wall Wallogr. It's freaking stupid. R Rombolio is a lot easier to say. Rombolio just sounds like a normal, um, a normal familiar name. Rombolio, easy. Waldegrr, not so much. Uh, and then as far as making these guys, I remember I was saying, you know, maybe we'll get the plus five walker and we'll make a sixth one, and then, then we can use that sixth spare one to go in here, and we'll go for a Zolofbi, and then we'll go for a Tolag, and we'll mix all of them into this guy. That's no longer an option, uh, considering all of the stabling and stuff. Um, I mean, it is an option, but we're, we're going to be doing this and then go for Bobadom. This is a far away plan. And honestly, um, you know, it's, it's good. Don't get me wrong. But like, if you look here, Walkham has 30% in power chance and 2.6k damage. 
This guy is 2.6k damage, also 30% in power chance, 0.5 quad strike. So as far as the actual like stats go, they're very, very, very similar. The only difference is uh, probably, I haven't even looked at this to be honest, is their skills. So 1SP heal, 1SP target, 1SP random, really, really good. He's got 1SP heal, uh, 1SP execute, 1SP random. So I'm sure his heals are better, uh, 1.8 to 2.7. 1.9 he's not even that much better i mean he is but he's not that much better so i don't think i would even fuse him anyway because if i got a zolophy i'd be thrilled and i'd be like oh shit yeah like 60 percent block zolophy i would just keep him uh, i wouldn't throw him away to get a slightly better walkum and a plus five walkum with augments is going to be better than a a stable uh, a, a base water anyway so uh yeah i'm not going to make him i've decided i'm not even going to try to make him anymore uh, we'll get our Walkum plus 5, we'll get our Bobadon plus 5, and we'll be a happy little chicken when that finally happens, if that finally happens. Anyway, that is Thursday Capture 8 done. Sunday, as always, will be uh, Trials Gauntlet, uh, Raid, and World Boss. Well, I say as always, they're the three, uh, like, you know, item fun things, and now that the new content is out, we'll be doing all three of them. Uh, the Boss Raid, uh, sorry, World Boss Melvin Champ, I only found out recently, is only tier 10. Uh, I think maybe I knew that when I did the initial video, but I'd forgotten about it. So anyone under tier 10 can't do Melbourne Champ, which is a bit of a dick, um, but it is what it is. So yeah, we'll be doing him. We'll be doing Raid 7 on Heroic, hopefully, and some Trials of it. While we're here, we can quickly look at my Raid team. So I'm at this, my highest TS Raid team is this. So it's not necessarily my best utilized team for mitigating damage and being able to clear it but this is the maximum ts i have available to me as a raid team um which is chaos who is a blit let's just see if, if they've changed it duggernaut which is bait okay that's still the case which is good rev me up has turned into a dps um so he replaced pros he also looks freaking amazing um so he replaced pros which jumped my ts up huge I'm obviously DPS, and then Eagle, as always, is a tank. He has a Mythic, which I didn't know he had. Gain 5% damage reduction while shielded. Well, there you go. And he's also gone to a Blit. Okay, so let's see, it changes. It changes all the freaking time. So, effectively, uh, if he's in the back line, the Blit is wasted. Anyway, this is a, this is a Sunday item, item find problem. Uh, this is a Thursday capture eight video, and it's finished. So, either way, uh, hopefully you enjoyed that. As always, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. If you like this video, click here to see another one just like it. If you're new to the channel and like what I'm doing, click here to subscribe and become the newest member of the Chicken Coop. If you really like what I'm doing, you can find a link to my Patreon in the description, where you can help support me and help the channel grow. You'll also find a link to the channel's Discord server, where you can chat with me and other members of the Chicken Coop. And don't forget to hit that notification bell.